Hi, so we've been in traffic for about 40 minutes now. We've been in, what, Mill Valley? Well, we were actually moving. We were moving from 6 o'clock to 6.40. Right, so now it's 7.48. And we've just been in traffic for, I guess, yeah, probably close to an hour now, yeah. And we've just been in, it's, is it Mill Valley is where we are? That red light that you see on my face is the uh, brake lights of the person ahead of us. I thought it was pretty good lighting, but he's not cooperating by keeping it on the entire time like he was before. Now we're moving a little bit, so we have minor progress going. We've been debating for the last 20 minutes or so if we want to continue to try to go. It's not even a real gig, not even a real spot. There's just options, there's open mics, there's places to hang out with other comics. Say hi. Look pretty. I'm really good at that. Here with John Lear. Say hi, John. Hey. I got the red light on you. Yeah, that's good. my bloodshot eyes. That you got from the stress of being in traffic. Sure. This has happened a few times before where we've just been in traffic and we've just kind of hung out and gotten to know each other. It's part of having a road buddy. I feel bad for any comic that rolls alone. I drive alone sometimes and I get to do traffic all by myself. That is very tedious. Yeah. Now I get to share it with all of you because I'm not driving so I could sit here and record some of it. And you can see how exciting comedy is on the road. This is part of the life. This yeah. is definitely... I'm not trying to act like, oh my god, it was so bad. This is... Semi-normal. I feel like this happens to me one in, I don't know, 12 times, maybe even more, one in eight. It varies because it's random. I could have it happen two days in a row where I'm sitting in traffic, or I could go a whole week and never have to worry about it. Yeah. Usually it's not that bad getting into the city. No, there must be something going on. Maybe somebody died. We can almost help it. I wonder if people think I'm recording them. Like, no, no, no. I am not paying any attention to your car, to your automobile, or anything that you're doing. Should have taken the bus, right? There is the bus. It's right there. It's stuck here with us. No one's making their It would have been quicker to go in time. Yeah, at this point, yes. Had I mean, had we known how bad it was... Do your viewers know, understand where you live? The, the whole basic idea of how remote you actually are from like the big city. San Francisco, right? Some people are Santa Rosa natives, so they understand mm -hmm. the, the all of this. Some people don't, actually. That's a good point. Is some people are... They don't really understand California. Right. Because California is very big. It's basically like multiple states. Me driving to San Francisco, in a way, is like going to a different state because it can be kind of an hour just to get into SF. We're looking at two hours on the road. Yeah. And we haven't made it 30 miles quite, like, is that about? That's about right. Yeah. Cool. Yay. It's well, a good we opportunity. Had a, we had a long road trip coming up in uh, April, right? We've got Elk Grove. Yeah, go that's, a, that's, that's notably going to take longer than the amount of time we've been in the car. As of now, that well, maybe, possibly, possible. We're down. We're ready. But yes, getting around the barrier. Sometimes there's reverse commutes because there's people getting on, off work, you know, at different times. So going into the city, uh, usually the times we go, it's easy because no one is going into the city at, at the evening. They're leaving it. The bridge even can shift lanes throughout the day. They have big multi-billion dollar machine that moves the divider over so it's four lanes one direction and two the other and they can shift that to three and they've never done it one and five have they that's never no there'd have to be something really amazing going on to split the lane down to one and five and like pride day or something they might do something like that or like aliens are floating over the city and everyone's trying to get out or everyone's trying to get in what would it be I love. I always, I always worry about that when I'm driving along, just peacefully, just on the road, and all of a 
of a sudden, like, 12 cars just pass me like a bat out of hell. And I think, what the hell happened back there? So I just immediately start speeding in case there's an alien invasion. Just in case. You never just in know. case, because you don't know. Or it could be, you know, I actually remember when we were in the city a few years back, my phone was dead and your phone was dead. Just coincidentally, I was like, oh, yeah, I didn't charge it, whatever. And we're like, man, it really smells like smoke. Mm-hmm. And we get back in and it was the horrifying Santa Rosa fires that That's we right. could smell from San Francisco the night they were happening. That's how bad they were that fast. We had no idea what was going on because just didn't, weren't checking anything, just driving back. We could smell it so strong on the bridge. That was weird. It was a very strange night. That was haunting. Because you never know what's happening. Like, we don't know what's going on right now. We assume it's not the end of the world. But if anyone finds this... <laughs> send out any shout-outs to family that might be out there, possibly... Well, my family kind of disowned me, so that's... Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. If you're out there, I hope you're not anymore. That's kind of the way it works when you're the blackest of the black sheep. I hope you were at ground zero. That's, that goes quick. Patient zero. I would think that getting into San Francisco is not something anyone would want to do if the world was ending. Like, I would assume not. If any city should just be left alone... That'd be, what, Merced. I shouldn't always be left alone. But imagine this, this conversation, everything we've been doing. Imagine an extra hour and 45 minutes of it. Just as riveting. So this is what it's like being a comic. (laughs) A day in the life. It's... I think for some comics it's different. Sometimes they get in cars and they're full of the San Francisco fog without it being foggy out, if you know what I mean. There's things like that that happen. We're pretty low-key in that that area. That's true. I just like looking cute. We're more needles than smoke, I think. That's... Yeah, depends where we're putting them, though. Exactly. So when people wonder, they ask me about shows and things I got going on. This is a big part of it, is driving. I, I remember a while back, I must have done well over a thousand miles. Well over, like, just oh, for sure. 10 to 20 hours of driving. Yeah, I think that's what some people don't get when they offer a gig and they're like, well, it'll be like, you know, maybe 20 bucks. I'm like, that's not even going to cover my gas to get there. That doesn't make any sense. I'm like, well, you're only going to be up for 10 minutes. Yeah, 10 minutes of stage time, but hours of driving, hours of prep, you know, working on material. It's The time on stage isn't really what we're getting paid for. It's all of this stuff. Yeah, we have to value our time. That's why I really like when people run shows and they block people together. It's I appreciate it so much when I get a book done a show and I say, well, can I bring anybody? Because one, driving alone, and two, it's just kind of, it's just better for everybody if there's you know more of the same people you know same area driving because why you know why not book two or three even four people from the same city so we can all roll together we all know each other exactly they can bring out some of the people they know and they like we're moving now this is exciting yeah we are okay actually my speedometer is not actually registering any sort of movement so we're going maybe a mile an hour. My comedy is inspired by traffic, I have to admit. Just the slow pace of it, the red, it's the vibrant red, the sea of red and black. It all makes sense now, doesn't it? I was born in traffic, so it kind of works. But I hope you've enjoyed this slice of life. Uh, it's riveting. It's a thing that we do. And thank you for checking it out. I hope it was as boring as it is to do. 